So the 4000 series of Nvidia has been released and nakita natin yung performance niya, yung numbers and of course yung price. For most of us, that's mostly out of reach. But here comes yung 4070 Ti. Currently, the cheapest 4000 series from NVIDIA. And in this video, we're going to be reviewing yung ASUS Tough 4070 Ti. So welcome sa isa na namang edisyon ng things na i-review ko, pero posible ko bilhin. The chip itself is quite a leap from the previous na generation versus yung 3070 Ti. That's mainly thanks to the smaller fabrication process and the new generation RT and Tensor cores. So, katulad ng 4000 series so far, mga cards, gumagamit din siya ng 16-pin na power connector. So, nandito siya. So, kailangan nito ng adapter. Pero, ang medyo good news naman sa kanya is, number one, dalawang 8-pin lang yung co-connect dun sa adapter na yun. And this is listed as 285 watts lang, yung maximum na TDP. Actually, that's going to be the ongoing theme for this video card. Yung kanyang power efficiency. We'll talk about that later. Now for the ASUS stuff, itong specific card na ito. It's got a few tricks dun sa sleeve niya na we've come to expect dun sa tough na line ng ASUS. So first, meron siyang 3.25 slot na GPU. So medyo malaki siya. Pero it's not so massive. Actually, yung first impression ko sa kanya... Actually, ang laki niya, ba? Pero, nung pagkabuhat ko sa kanya, it's surprisingly light. As in, talagang hindi siya tulad nung 3080 Ti na Vulcan, or of course, yung 4090, na talagang napakabigat. This is a very light na card. So, it's got 3 DisplayPort 1.4A ports and 2 HDMI 2.1A ports. So, aesthetically, yung aesthetics lagi nung TUF is very, you know, uh, very militaristic. Mukha siyang rugged. Pero, of course, hindi mo siya pwede ibagsak. Mukha lang siyang rugged. And it shows dun sa mga angles na pinili niya. It's very subdued, pero at the same time, very unique din yung kanyang design. Okay, so malaking part ng aesthetic niya and of course, yung function niya is yung kanyang shroud. Mostly, yung shroud niya, sabi nila na ano siya, vented na exoskeleton. <laughs> Ang dami mga militaristic na terms. Although covered siya completely dito sa side na to, ang dami niyang mga butas. So it helps quite a lot with cooling. Kadalasan, yung shrouds ng mga GPU, nakakahamper siya or nakakahinder dun sa cooling performance niya. And that's not the case with this card. So it has a tri-fan cooling system. Ang tawag nila dun sa fan sila is yung Axial Tech whatever. <laughs> and sinasabi nila and they're claiming na yun nga, it's 21% more airflow daw dun sa design na yun. And dun sa nakita nating results dun sa mamaya, dun sa benchmark natin, we can't argue with that claim kasi ang ganda talaga ng cooling performance niya. Tapos isa pang nagustuhan ko sa kanya is yung <laughs> very maliit na thing to. Yung fans niya, in business stickers, meron siyang like 3D embossed na badges. Um, very premium looking. Although kapag umikot naman to, hindi mo rin makikita na ano. Pero you know, it adds dun sa kanyang pagka premium na feel. Of course, hindi kompleto kung hindi natin pag-uusapan yung RGB. Yung RGB nito, as the same with all tough line, hindi siya ganun ka OA. It's present, pero it's not, you know, pervasive or like siya yung number one na titignan mo dun sa card. It's controllable via Aura Sync, very tasteful and maganda yung placing niya dun sa card. So, isa pang unique dito sa tough na GPU na ito is yung kanyang hardware switch between yung performance and yung quiet mode. So, yung performance and quiet mode, ang difference lang nila is a 400 megahertz na overclock basically. So, for all of our tests, ginamit ko yung performance mode. So outside of the card, dun sa box meron siya of course libre na adapter para dun sa 16 pin. Tapos meron din siya na sag bracket. So actually nung nire-review ko lang siya na discover na sag bracket pala siya kasi it doubles as a screwdriver. 
So pero, yun nga, uh, malaki siya tapos ganito medyo beefy. But at the same time, I don't think na you would need yung sag bracket na yun. Kasi nga, it's surprisingly light. Pero it's very nice of Asus to include that. So for software naman, meron yung Asus na GPU Tweak 3. It's a monitoring and tuning software where you can, yun nga, monitor yung performance ng GPU mo and also tweak yung settings like yung frequency, voltage, and whatever. Also, meron doon mga automatic tunings where isascan nila yung uh, mismo GPU mo and mag magpe-prescribe sila ng magandang uh, settings. Isa pang medyo weird, although okay lang naman, is yung Quantum Cloud na software. It's a software where you just run it and then you passively earn money by lending yung GPU power mo dun sa app na yun. Okay, so enough about that. Tignan naman natin yung performance. So, this time we did something different dun sa pag-test natin. We tested itong GPU na to in two different systems. One system is like yung talagang beastly na system where lahat ng pinaka-powerful na components nandito. So, we can maximize yung potential nitong 4070 Ti. Another is yung system ko, which represents yung previous generation where, um, yun nga, medyo compromise siya in terms of performance kasi 5600X lang siya and so forth. And makikita natin dito kung ano yung pwede mong i-expect na performance benefits if you're just going to upgrade yung current na system mo. Okay, so start muna tayo dun sa, of course, yung Beastly na system. It performs really well. So, ito 4070 Ti na to, we believe this is a 1440p card. So, lahat ng tinest namin games dito, nasa 1440p and lahat naka-maximum, like talagang balls to the ball na settings. So, yung mga typical na AAA games like Assassin's Creed, Horizon Zero Dawn, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it averages around 80 to 100 plus na FPS. That is at yung maximum settings, again, at 1440p. So, nagkaroon lang siya ng struggle, and I mean struggle, Doon sa, of course, yung usual na suspect natin, yung cyberpunk na naka-ray tracing psycho and walang DLSS. So, naka-50 plus lang siya. Pero kapag kain mo yung DLSS, which is of course expected na gagawin mo with a title like this, we can expect 70 to 90 FPS pa. Which is, you know, way more than enough for gaming. So, nag-struggle din siya sa isa pang game. So, itong game na to, it's new. And it joins yung mga disappointing games, pero ang sarap i-benchmark. That is Forspoken. Sa Forspoken, nag-sub 60 FPS siya, even with the beastly na system. Pero, yun nga, walang DLSS yun. If you enable yung DLSS, again, more than 60 FPS, more than enough for gaming. So, clearly, okay siya for 1440p gaming. Although, hindi naman kailangan and hindi talaga ina-expect, tinest namin siya sa 1080p and you can see the results. It's staggeringly high. And sa 4K, yung ibang AAA games of the past, yes, of course, it's doable and viable. Pero, ayun nga, again, dun sa things like yung Cyberpunk na nasa city, gabi, tapos maraming reflections, medyo nagsastruggle na siya at 4K. Ganun din, syempre, dun sa Forspoken. And also, yung iba pang games, like yung tinest din namin yung Microsoft Flight Simulator. Although, okay siya sa 1440p. At 4K, medyo kung nakulang na siya. So, again, 4K is viable, pero don't expect na kaya siya ng ultra settings lahat. Either gagamit ka ng DLSS dun sa mga titles na available, or ibababa mo ng konti yung settings. Okay, so maganda yung performance niya and we're happy to report na maganda rin yung thermal and power draw performance niya. Yung thermals niya, hindi siya lumagpas ever ng 73 degrees even at 100% GPU usage. And yung pinakamataas lang na game in terms of yung TDP is yung Forspoken at 270 plus watts. So... Maganda siya, it's very power efficient and hindi ka mag-worry na baka mag-melt yung adapter mo. Kasi nga, mababa lang yung power draw niya but it does so much with that power. Speaking of thermal performance, ganun din yung na-report naming mga thermal readings dun sa 5600X na system which is nasa isang SFF na case, yung NR200P Max. So even with a small space like that, maganda yung cooling performance niya. So yun yung performance niya dun sa Beastly na system. Pero dun naman sa isa pa, yung may less powerful, dito na magkakaroon ng problem. And yung problem na yun is mainly bottlenecking. 
yung bottleneck na issue, kadalasan sinaswipe away lang namin yan or talagang ini-ignore lang namin kasi most of the time, it's harmless. Pero dito sa GPU na to, in this case, medyo malaking-malaki yung difference niya. So, do sa 1440p, and actually kahit sa 1080p, sa ibang games, it's staggering. Yung iba, 80 FPS yung performance difference niya. Ang nagkaiba lang is yung CPU. So, yun nga yung sinasabi natin, yung ongoing theme nitong GPU na ito. It's good performance with good thermals and minimal na power draw. Kung iisipin natin, yung performance niya is equal to a 3090. Pero with the power efficiency of a mildly overclocked na 3060 Ti. So, i-wrap around natin yung head natin dun, no? You're getting your performance no once na most powerful GPU of the past generation, pero maliit lang yung power draw niya. So, do we actually recommend buying this card? Um, yung usual na HWS conditions apply here. If you have a 1440p na monitor and you're buying a brand new system with the intention of gaming on 1440p, yes, definitely this is the correct card to buy. It gives you so much power at a very low thermal hit and power draw. At the same time, meron kang access dun sa mga bagong technologies like yung DLSS 3 and yung new generation na ray tracing. But of course, it's a very nice thing to have in case ma-support yun ng current game mo na ini-enjoy mo na. So, magkakaroon na tayo ng problema dun sa kung iniisip mo na maganda ba siyang upgrade. Ngayon, if you're buying this as an upgrade, mas maraming conditions. First, kung ang GPU mo is 3070 Ti ay pababa, Yes, this is a very good card. However, makukuha mo lang yung maximum performance niya kung at least meron kang 5800X 3D. That's very hard to swallow. <laughs> Kasi nga, mahal pa rin yung 5800X 3D. And kung iisipin, it's still a very relevant na system. We're not saying din naman na if lower yung CPU mo, huwag mo na to bilhin ever. We're just saying na i-manage mo yung expectations mo, especially if you have... A lower CPU. So regardless, ASUS made a really great 4070 Ti card. Yung ASUS top na line, they never fail to deliver solid products na premium and very high performance. And ito 4070 Ti na to from ASUS top is no exception. It's highly recommended if kasama ka dun sa mga conditions na nilis namin kanina. So, yun nga, either way, this is a very solid card. This is a worthwhile improvement, especially if 3070 Ti ay pababa yung GPU mo. And yun nga, yung 3070 Ti is a relatively high-spec card pa rin. If you're thinking of an upgrade or if you're thinking of buying a 3090, wag mo nang bilhin yung 3090. Bilhin mo na lang yung 4070 Ti. Medyo unfortunate lang na as of shooting itong review na ito, hindi nabigay sa amin yung price point nito. So if ever ma-edit na siya, ipa-flash na lang namin dito <laughs> yung price niya. Highly recommended, yun nga, if na-meet mo yung <laughs> prerequisites na kailangan para ma-maximize itong GPU na ito. So, if you like this video, hit like and consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed already. Also, check out yung aming website, yung hwsugar.ph for your PC needs. And also, visit yung aming physical store here at Chino Roses Mahati Hardware Sugar. Also, check out yung aming Discord. Uh, Mag-join kayo doon kasi marami kami mga events doon. And nandun na rin yung parang pinaka-tech forum natin. Wala na yung pm.hwsugar.ph. RIP. So, thank you for watching and see you sa next na video.